you can continue to role play um, as you want, and I can attempt to play role play as character. Um, um, but I have some other things. If like it, it's I don't think it'll end too badly. So, I my my more concern is that without his character, I'm not sure we can win this battle. <laughs> well, but if if JJ's role playing his character, then we would have his character there for the battle. I guess that's true. But if you, I mean, if you didn't, um, so, I mean, I don't, I mean, without, like, giving it away, you would be, you are making some assumptions. Right. Okay, so where did we leave off in our whole discussion? We we left off with the idea that Martin and... Ramis are at some sort of an impasse. Right. So we left off with, I guess, in the first fight, everyone would be like, sure, Ramis can ex- ask the next question. And everyone just kind of assumed maybe that it would be out loud or whatever. But then, then Ramis, whispered Ramis whispered it. And, and you're like, what? And so people are kind of <laughs> like, whoa, hold up. And then now Ramis is like, no, I'm not telling you guys. Um, it's important to me. You know, it's worth my life, but I can't tell you. Does he still tell Eula and get Eula to speak about it? I uh, I would assume so. Yeah, if people were like, uh, I don't know, and he'd be like Eula, you know, you know, speaking to Eula so that Eula could argue for or against, I guess. But so, so then I say, yeah, it's. I think it's a question worth asking. If it were that important, he could share it with the group. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of working on this one. Like, if everybody was on board, I'd be like, "All right, let's, whatever, let's just do this." But, like, uh, if it's not, if it's like, you know, kind of questionable, I'm definitely on the side of I'd rather know before we do it. Although to play devil's advocate, when in our not role playing part of the uh, hangout conversation, John did agree to one of my hypothetical terms. If I were to be allowed to ask the next next question blindly, with no questions asked, and you guys would help me as long as it wasn't suicidal, then I would agree to go along with this fight. Right. The problem right. is the rest of us have to agree to that as well, not just right. And then exactly. Like, Wait, now this is crazy. <laughs> exactly. But I was basically like, I am not going to enter into this bargain unless everybody agrees to, because everybody agreed to do it when uh, Ramos did it. So it's only well, fair that everybody should be able to agree to it when I do it. I I Durka says I agreed to let Ramos do it because I really wanted the answer to the first question and that was his price to fight that. That was a value trade off. I have no desire to get whatever answer this is. And I Me certainly have, probably won't have any desire to get the next answer either. That's two fights that I have no benefit from. And I completely agree with that. Then I don't get to ask the next question and I don't participate so, in this fight. So Corey, you have no clue where this door is or how to find this door, but it's not of value to have that question answered. Is that the question he's asking? It's not the questions he's asking, but I'm assuming that was what would be the next question. No, I'm not asking you know that. that. I, I, my is asking me to follow it blindly. Okay. <laughs> all right. I am right. new to this party, so I wish not rock boat. In old party, it was mostly barbarians. <laughs> they do not have this kind of discussion. <laughs> okay. That's true. So, Ramos, Ramos tells you that... Um, he understands your he understands your position, but he believes that it is a question best kept to himself. Okay, okay. Well, let and, me. Uh, and the risk, the decision, risk to my life is better mitigated by keeping to myself. Before we make any decisions, let me just check a couple other prices, uh, just to to see if we really, really are getting the same price no matter what we ask. Right. Uh, so, uh, librarian, uh, could you could you let help us figure out the price of uh, yes or no? Does Drax believe that that all of us are dead? Okay, so just to speed things up, yeah, like it just it spins around and mm-hmm. then it just comes back back to here with your whole party here. Right. Fuck the universe, um, man. Yeah, Fuck. the universe is kind of assholes. Even though he said he wasn't assholes, because like no matter what question we ask, big or small, we have to fight. That was kind of a question. No, he he said he said the universe easy. was well, an yeah. asshole. I have a, I have other that. questions. Let, let's just see. Yeah. What have I got in my pockets? So just to speed things up, um, everything that you ask, it ends okay. up back. I just here. wanted to see. Like it is, 
No matter how small or trivial, it is really the same thing. Well, then we should ask the biggest damn question ever. Like, how? <laughs> what are the exact steps to become immortal? <laughs> yeah, the problem is, the universe was kind of an asshole with that first question. It, it told us the answer to what we asked, but it didn't really get our intent and tell us, like, it told us the, the most efficient way to get to Peridot was to go through that door. Right. It didn't tell us how to yeah. find that door, where that door is. And we have reason to think that it's not the door we thought it was. So it still kind of left our intent unanswered. We don't have the steps we need to follow it. If we asked what we need to become immortal, they would be probably impossibly hard things that we can't do. Right. So, yeah. But you could ask, what are things that I could do to become immortal? <laughs> yeah, but it could also easily right. be like, first, uh, adventure until you're level 20, then right. God. That, that right. also gets into the territory of what he said the universe was not like. But it's not like a genie where you have to sit there and, and ponder what your question is going to be so that you phrase it exactly correct. It understands well, your right. intent. So if you're saying, if I ask how am I, what is the, you know, how am I going to be able to find Parado? And it says, you have to go through this door. My intent was where the fuck is that door that I have to go through? Like, I want to get to Parado. So if you're just telling me there is a door somewhere, but I'm not going to tell you where it is, you didn't get my intent. Well, you could... I interpret that to mean that the it gets your intent, but it doesn't always give you all of the information in one answer. It's not going to tell you a story to tell you. Like, it's not going to give you like a book of instructions. That, to me, is still very much like a genie. If you don't phrase your question exactly the way that you want it to be answered, then no, you're not going to get the answer you like... want. A genie is like the thing on the commercial where you say like, "Hey, I want a thousand bucks," and it gives you a thousand deer. deer yeah, right. Like that's that's like monkey's paw shit, right? Where like you have to pick the specific <laughs> words and stuff like that. Like the it totally answered our question. It just didn't give us a book, like a long detailed answer with a map and instructions and stuff like that. Like it told us, "This is how you need to do it. This is the most efficient way to do it." Like it answered our question. It didn't tell us like okay, well, here's where the door is, and here's how it works, and here's how you activate it, and here's you know, where you need to go find it today, and here's how you get a map, because it travels I don't know. Like, I, I, I think I think we're just not going to agree on that, because like, if I asked a question, hey, my car's broke down, how do I fix it? And he says, you have to replace the alternator. I, my intent was, how do I get my car Ooh. running again, not what do right. I need to replace? I know that there's something broke on my car. You don't have to tell me what part specifically that I'm not going to how to replace anyway. Yeah, my no, intent I was that I wanted my car running again, so what do I need to do to run my get my car running again? Right. Point of order, I just wanted to say, first thing I thought of was alternator before you even said the part. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. Like, I think even, even if it had said, the best way to do this is to find a 20th level wizard who can cast some some relatively rare spell and have them do it, and they will they will fix your car. It's like, well, okay, sure, but you didn't tell me how to do that. Like, you told me that's the best way to go about it, but it, you, there's a big gap there. I feel like this is the same thing as telling us there's this door that she went through. Going through that door will fix it. It's like, okay, well, but, but that's also just like being like, tell me all the knowledge of the universe. Like, you just can't. You know, like you can't right. like, like ask one know. question that like encompasses all information that's pertinent to like your intent. I think, it's a, I think when it's as simple as just tell me where to find this person is, that should be pretty straightforward. So this Durka thing, like, in character, Durka's like, this is, like, a perfect reason why we shouldn't just go along with blind questions. Because... Oh, no, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. My entire no, point, my entire point of saying I want to be next in line and it be a blind question is to prove that you guys should not go into a bargain blindly. Right. No, now, I if you're agree. stupid like, enough to do it, I will accept your bargain. <laughs> but I am not going to be stupid enough to do that. No, I agree. Like I don't think that ans I don't think that it's worth a fight to answer a question that we don't even know what the value. So we I don't know what the value to me is. I don't even know what the value of the question is to you, to Ramis, to anybody. Like I will tell you I'm that my sure question is that I think that the universe is even going to answer it. You know. I'll I'll give you more information than Ramos would. My question will be completely selfish to me. It'll have <laughs> nothing to do with any of you, and I will probably lead you astray to gain myself more power than you could possibly imagine. Okay. I don't. I don't mean to uh, to to put you down in any way. I, I I mean this with the utmost respect. I completely assumed that of you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> All right. So. Um, after this kind of discussion, um, it seems clear that you guys are not going to go with this question. So, like, you 
you know, you zip back around. Um, <laughs> and um, so, so Ramus, Ramus is like, you know, I, I am, I am sorry that, you know, this is, you know, not. Um, I'm sorry that this, you know, this approach was not suitable for you guys, and you know, uh, but um, I will not. I, I have to, I am not interested at all in, you know, hunting down and killing this Parado, and, um, it is not worth it to me just to fight that, so he's like, I wish you luck, and I will be waiting for you guys when you get back. And I am very sorry that we've traveled with you for all of these months and risked our lives alongside you, and you can't trust us enough to tell us what one question is. <laughs> There's some burns going on now. Yep. Long hey, time, long before, time before camp, I'm, Ramus friends. As I say, before this game started, Ramus and I were traveling together for like two months. So the fact that he won't, that he would share it with Eula and not me, hurts my feelings. Yep. All right, so are we gonna fight something? Depends. Do I get to ask the next question? <laughs> Wait, we didn't even know what question we would ask. Yeah. If we were gonna ask the next question. Yeah, maybe. What question would you ask? <laughs> Man, it's a new deal now, I'll tell you. I, I want to know where all the warlocks in the universe are and how I can get to them. That seems like a question the universe is not going to answer in that format. I'm pretty sure they have to if I beat the challenge. How about, how about like... Yeah, but, but in the same them. way, it might say uh, where, okay, where all of them are. There are 23 in this kingdom. There are two in that kingdom. And there's one in this other kingdom. The way to get to them is to ask around and find information and follow them. That answer is already more information than I have now. I'll take yeah, it. Say, right? like, but it's not right. enough to do jack. Oh, bullshit. If they tell, if they even tell me there's one in Redwall, I'm not leaving Redwall until I find yeah, that but one. But Redwall's a city. It's not a kingdom. Yeah, but still, one in Redwall is the same as, like, ten in a kingdom or something like that. Like, you know, it's a ratio. Yeah. But yeah. I think you'd be better off with, it's like... some information, but it's not what you asked for. I think you'd be better off listing like names and hometown, name and hometown. Because of every person. So like, if you asked that question, it would have probably ended up like there would just it probably would have been like just a stack of papers that like like a stack like a column that like went as far as the eye could see up, you know? Because in an infinite universe, there's going to be infinite amount of warlocks, so there's going to be an infinite column with the list of all the names. No, but okay. Living today, there probably what an infinite universe. There would be infinite worlds. But, so in our dimension, see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is this is turning into genie shit. Where you've got to phrase your question. Yeah, this well, is the know, correct. That's the part that uh, that my character doesn't understand. Like the the whole like different timelines, different worlds. Like there's this world. I'm in this world. This is what's real. My intent when asking the question is feasibly the something that I can reach and that I can get to. Yeah, but I, I have no. I don't think you'd get the information you want. Even Maybe what I not. told you might be more than you'd get. Maybe you wouldn't not. even get like ten percent of them are in this kingdom. So you wouldn't even know how many there are. That's true. So out of curiosity, you what would your next question be? If you had ah, that's a good question. I don't even know at this point. But so, yeah, I mean, I, he, he's not. He's not this... like the universe is not like a genie. But if you ask just a super like vague question, like it. Where are all the warlocks, and you know, where is every warlock? Like, it's I don't well, think that's a vague question. That is I'll, a very vague question. I'll make it even easier on you. Here is a map of this kingdom. I want you to put a red blotch on on the map where each warlock is right now. So you, that wouldn't work. But if you asked, "Where's every warlock in this kingdom?" That is something that you could. That that's like very like easily accessible. It's so like something like that. Like if you ask that question, the scope of knowledge. Like right. there's a limit to how much you can get with one question. See, that's not what this librarian told us when we got here. The librarian said that when we ask a question, it will be a challenge based upon the difficulty of the question you're asking, and that the universe is not an asshole. It will understand your intent and what you want. That's my intent is I want to hunt down every warlock and kill them. And so therefore, my intent when asking the question is tell me where the fuck they are so I can murder them. All right, well, you're <laughs> wrong because he did not say this. that the strength of the question was the challenge of the difficulty. 
he said it was totally random based on the universe <laughs> their whims so, I think okay so I think if Dirk was going to ask a question she would ask a question about how to ensure Redwall's destruction something along those lines I don't think any of us are going to come up with a question that all of us want to ask is that fair to say what? That doesn't make sense. If I kill all the warlocks and become infinitely powerful, you guys have a god on your side. That is totally worth everybody's time. Yeah, Durka doesn't care. Not if it takes more than my lifetime for you to succeed. <laughs> I would only want to know what happened to my old adventuring party. I want to know if they're still alive. Are they happy? <laughs> what is going on with them? Yeah. So none of us have a question <laughs> that all of us are interested in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm purposely <laughs> saying nothing, Bill. <laughs> so I think we should about, decide whether whether we are going to come up with a question that we can all be agreed on, or we should just bail. Well, I'm easily bought, though. I will agree. I would have agreed to Ramos's question, not even knowing what it is, if it were worth something right. to me. But not knowing what the answer or what the question is, the answer didn't mean shit to me. So he had to offer something else in exchange. If he wasn't so, going to tell me the question, he needed yeah. to offer something else that was worth it to me. No, if agree. you were to say, hey, next time we encountered a warlock, I will fight alongside you as if that battle were as important to me as it is to you. I'd have been like, okay, all right. Now we're in, we're in business. <laughs> so hold on. Dirk, you, you, you mentioned a potential question there. What, what if we rephrase that as... What would make the difference between, uh, or what, what what could make the difference in whether Redwall falls or not? No, no. Why do we care? We point. only want it to fall, right? Well, so I'm asking, what would make the difference between it falling and not falling? Well, what about I think that question. I think to backpedal even further than that, a question that we would all want to answer, except for maybe Billy's character. But Billy's character seems to be kind of okay with going with the flow. We all want to know where the fuck this door is. That's true. Except, except for John, who left. Yeah, so, except, yeah, except for Ramos. All right, let's ask where the door is then. Yes, this sounds good. But we also established that we don't think we can win this fight without Ramos fighting alongside us. Uh, that might be true as well. I exactly. think. You and so, wait, so, so Ramos is already outside of the library? Is that what happened? Yep. Oh. Uh, I asked that rephrasing because I, I thought Ramos might might be willing to fight for that one, even if he wouldn't for Turkish phrasing. I don't think he cares about the fate of Redwall either. Yeah, He's we can go outside him. and ask him. That, that's the reason yeah. I tried to rephrase it was to, yeah. I was looking for a rephrasing I mean, that I thought might get him on board. Out of character, I feel like I have a pretty good idea, or at least a, a general direction of what his question was going, but just to play into like his character's background and whatnot, but I don't understand the reason for the secrecy though. So I I Durka would totally be up for for asking any question that gets us closer to Parado or any question that leads us to us a, a quest that gets that takes down Redwall. Either one of those are Durka's interests. I think your scope is a little small, Durka. Redwall falling is kind of a big deal, but what if we were to take down the whole kingdom that surrounded it? Maybe the corruption spreads beyond that. And when Redwall falls, that Rex Asha had said there had been other places that had been like Redwall that had fallen. We haven't lived in them, but I'm sure there's just as shitty places. It'd be cool to see those fall too. Uh, yeah. I mean,. So it might be better to find the root of what is taking things down and how we can help that thing that's taking everything down <laughs> do it. So unless we think that the four of us can succeed on the next challenge, it doesn't matter what question we come up with True. unless we want to go outside and see if Ramos is in on it. The question doesn't matter if we're not willing to do the fight. So we either go outside and talk to Ramos or we just leave. Lorcan backs well, we down from that we're no take fight on that, she wants, that she has a reason to fight. Uh, Except unless she thinks she's going to die, or if her friends are going to die, or if she's going to lose power, <sighs> or if she. <laughs> right. So, so, but see, we have three options. We either decide that the four of us are going to take on the challenge. We try to get Ramos in on the challenge by seeing if he's willing to fight for one of these other questions, or we leave. Well, right. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to meta too much, but John's not here. 
So but JJ like, said he would. JJ said that I, I'm assuming that JJ talked to Jonathan and he got some parameters. So JJ said that he could role play Jonathan to a certain extent. Right. So I took that as that he could role play him, but he didn't want to roll his stats. If we want to do one of these questions, I think we should go outside and, and just see. And JJ might just say no for meta reasons. I'll be right back. But if the four of us don't think we can take on the challenge, why are we wasting time talking about possible questions? Uh, I think we could. It would just be really hard. It'd be easier with Ramos. Definitely be easier with Ramos. I mean, the four of us... Let's be honest here. I almost died last time. Yeah, the four of us tend to be... The, the problem is that the four of us tend to be people that don't engage in a fight. So the four of us aren't going to be able to stand up to a bunch of melee characters. I can. Ow. I'll just fly really, really, really high and shoot them from afar. Let's not stand up to them. That's... Let's not stand up to them. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to, like, engage us in close combat, and none of us are close combat engaging people. Well, so I am, but I'm... Where the fuck is yeah, she? But I'm, I'm... You're not, like, a tank. You're, like, I a mean, I'm not a tank. <laughs> yeah. So that's the problem we have. Right. All right. Oh, I man. think we should just bail. Hey, what? Who has the highest? What is? Um, shit. Uh, Alpha Rin. What is your wisdom? My wisdom score. Let's pop this open real quick. My wisdom score is an eight. <laughs> Super high. Super oh, high. So potentially one thing that might be different we should consider is that is that. With Ramus gone, our fight parameters might be different as well. That's true. We can try it. I'll go back over and I'll ask a random question about what's in my pockets and see if it gives me the same fight result. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You should just ask if it does, question, is this a banana in my pocket or am I yeah. happy to see you? <laughs> if it does, you can just tell me that it's the same or you can say it's different and what we see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't heard no yet. I haven't heard it's just the same. No, oh, it's different. Aha. Uh -huh. So, what do we see this time? A you necromancer, see... two skeletons, and a bunch of turtles. Turtles. A bunch of undead turtles. Seriously, undead turtles? I was right. Undead turtles. Are they undead sea turtles or are they like tortoises, like land tortoises? Land turtles. Let's see. All right. So Ramus represents a huge fighting factor in our fight. <laughs> so we could ask a different question, just the four of us, and have this ooh, fight. Ooh, instead. ooh, ooh! I've got an idea. Let's all leave except for one of us, <laughs> and then one of you asks the question. Yeah, but if, one of us has to fight. Yeah, but... but if, if Lorcan wants to fight for the knowledge about warlocks, it's probably going to be a stupid answer. That's her choice. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we could send the singing guy in to do a fight for a question that he cares about, and let's see if he walks out later. <laughs> well, so, uh, Alpha, Elf, Elf, what question would you ask? Well, I was going to ask about my old friends. I haven't seen them in like a, I don't know, three or four hundred years. So I wonder if they're dead. Maybe. Wait, I don't know. Life, three or four hundred years. How old are you? It's small detail. Listen, <laughs> it's been a long time, and I wonder if they've gone on to have great lives. I'd like to meet their great grandchildren, perhaps. You, you yes. wait. What? Three or four hundred years? No, I, I, you look. I lived on an island for a really long time. It's very long story. You know, back where I'm from, I talk normally. You know, the language drifts over time. It's just something that happens. Uh, are we going to fight these things? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> so what you're saying is there's an island of immortality. Uh, no, that is not a thing, though. What? That's not what. No, but you did no. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about at all. <laughs> <laughs> Jerkin does not believe you. 
Well, uh, <laughs> there's, there's not much to that. You know? I, just don't, I wonder about my friends. You ask me what, I, I answer a question. I don't know why we keep going. You're not a bard at all, are you? You're a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can do some spooky shit, okay? I, I <laughs> but think it's mostly said- bard stuff. I Very think a few steps question. away from Alf in case uh, in case Lorcan brings down like Very important fire. Question. Ice. Where are you, you going, buddy? Very important question. Can you see through magical darkness? <laughs> uh, yes, I can see through magical. Insight. Darkness. I'm gonna see if he's. I want to know if he's lying. <laughs> I'm gonna say I have to know that too. <laughs> I might. Wait, he said that. yes. He yeah. said he could see through magical darkness. Then while I'm trying to figure out if he's lying, I'm also taking like. 20 more feet back <laughs> away from Elf. I need to know whether or not I believe him on that. That's one! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait! It's a natural one. I can reroll it. Uh, I so probably I believe him. I, still got, I got a natural two after my reroll. <laughs> I am a great and powerful warlock with many magics. God oh, damn it, Billy! <laughs> <laughs> You think I look so relaxed all the time? All right, I JJ, don't care. I don't you were prepared for this session. I am, I am okay. Quite powerful. Let's see where I am. Oh, good. I'm already far away. I'm already decently far from Elf. What? I am now oh, going God. over here. Where do you, where do you go, little friend? So I see gonna, you in socks. I'm gonna stare at Alf very intently. I'm be like, I, I, I'm gonna be like, so what you're saying? Is that you're a warlock of great power and you can see through magical darkness, right? No, fuck a warlock. Warlocks are stupid. I am a bard. I cast bardic magics. Let me show you. Uh, I'm gonna make a spell happen. Eldritch blast. Uh, <laughs> if it's Eldritch blast, <laughs> it's fucking on. <laughs> yes, behold my. My bardic power. And I'm going to cast bardic knowledge to cast a spell not on your spell list, which is from the <laughs> yeah. warlock spell list. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cast uh, Mage Hand, and I'm going to like uh, put something on the ground. Behold. And I'll pick some, pick up my uh, my rapier with, a, with Mage Hand, put it back in my hand. Powerful bardic magics. I'm going to use Mage Hand to steal it from him. <laughs> <laughs> steal it from his belt and wave it around. Make some like stupid looking flourishes and put it back on his belt. <laughs> I'll continue to stare at him and be like, "How do you see through magical darkness?" Well, you see, on on my many travels over the years, uh, many years, I, I've learned a few magical tricks. You know, the bard he knows how to do things. It is good I know how to do this. A powerful wizard would come by and go, "Hey, magic darkness!" Too. I go, "Hey, fuck you, wizard!" And I smash his face. Uh, point of order, darkness is not the magical uh, spell list of a wizard. Yeah, wizards suck ass anyway. Not <laughs> <laughs> his most powerful magic user. Seriously? Wizard doesn't have darkness? Oh, they do. I was... Weird. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Additional point of order, if anyone needs their alternator fixed, I know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. It's rare. It's rare gift of of bard. All right. Are we doing this fight or not, people? Are we looking for Parado or not? Right now, I'm trying to decide: Are we attacking Alf, or well, more look, importantly, am I attacking Alf? I mean, clearly, I am master bullshitter. Okay, look. I mean, I've been working a pretty strong thing here, and uh, we're all good, right? I mean, nobody stabby stabby. I help you stab these guys. Hey, that's not bad. I'm watching you. Good. You will learn many the bardic family, magics from me. You used to play a gnome that Joe hated, and now yeah. you play a bard that Martin hates. Somebody's gotta hate somebody. Hey, I, I wasn't gonna people. hate him until he said he could see through magical yeah. darkness. <laughs> and to be fair, I didn't hate the gnome until she backstabbed us. <laughs> and to be extra fair, I can't actually see through magical darkness. <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think you could. That's why I was I'm trying just, to hold the insight. I'm just an excellent bullshitter who feels compelled from time to time to practice his craft, so... Nice. Okay, so we're considering the question of where is and how do we get to the door that is linked to Peridot? Yeah. I think, there's, I think there's where is, how do we get through? Those are the two questions, I think. I was kind of hoping but you were going to ask. Two that. questions or as one question? I mean, so we already... Two questions know. means two challenges. 
Wait, so JJ, re re review the, the answer to the first question about how most efficiently to get to Barrow. Was it to go through the door? It was to go through to go through the door, yes. And and there was some detail about that, about how to go through the door. Uh, you pretty much had to walk through it. Yeah, I didn't like hear any simple, strange details. Like, like if you walk through it, uh, when I re watch the video, if you walk through it, you end up wherever Parado is because the door right, follows right, him. Right. And the reason the reason that was clear is because I was like, hey, we know we know where this door is, but it didn't happen. Right. And JD was like, are you sure it was the right door? Right, right. Because it was like if we went through the door, it would have happened. Right. So okay. who is who is this Peridot man, and why do you wish to kill him? He's a traitor. He casts Tasha's hideous laughter on boats and makes them crash together. Wait, what? Whoa. No, I mean, what? wait a minute. Sorry, I'm crossing <laughs> campaigns here. That sounded quite familiar. <laughs> I think the force that drives me also might drive this paradox. <laughs> no, this is a person who pretends to be your friend and then calls the authorities and stabs you in the back. Is he a she, powerful she a wizard? She was no. a traitor who implicated me in her traitorousness. Wait, is it she? Huh? Oh, okay. She is that a, a gnome? <laughs> yes, she is a gnome. She's not a gnome. Those are stupid creatures. I mean, no, gnomes are good. Gnomes are good. I like gnomes. <laughs> I spit on gnomes. <laughs> I think you are dwarves. <laughs> uh, stupid. <laughs> the only thing worse than a gnome is a goblin. So yeah, all you guys, <laughs> all you guys really need to know is how to how to get there. Like, um, uh, what are the directions to the door? Wait, wait, Billy, are you a little folk? No. I'm a normal-sized human. Y'all done run off the two little folk creatures I created, so... <laughs> God, damn it. I'm figuring I'm going to go up in size and see if that works. <laughs> <laughs> JJ took out one of them, and you yeah. self took out the other one. <laughs> I self took yeah. out, actually... Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, to be fair, yeah, we didn't run off Nash. Nash is still around. Yeah. He's just a statue. Just, he can't seem to be bothered to take him somewhere to get him fixed. I fully intend to get you him know. fixed when we get back to the place where there's fixing to be done. Yeah. No, I, I, I say that totally kidding. I, I might be up for getting him fixed later. <laughs> I'm up for getting him fixed. I'm, I'm peeved with Nash, but I don't have the hatred for take gnomes him, take him that you let us. Get him fixed. I just feel like I like being the guy who has a new character every three weeks or so. It's just like, <laughs> hey, you know. let's, let's celebrate the statue, not the goblin. Right. <laughs> Billy, Billy, when you come back, you have to come back as a little folk and become Jack. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. All right. Yeah, you all need Yula that. Yula wants to speak at a... Yula wants to give a, a eulogy. Ha, Yula <laughs> wants to give a eulogy sometime for, for Nash. So nice. She'll save it. But it, it's going to be about <laughs> celebrating the statue, not, not the new, not the, yeah. the goblin. Cool. cool. Alright, so Durga suggests that we fight the fight. So let's ask the question just to be sure. About yeah, what yeah, what let's make sure what we're asking door. here since the, the wording of the question does seem to matter. What sure. are the directions to the door? To get from here to the door. What are the specific step by step directions? <laughs> Because if you ask what are the directions to get the, the door, north by the northeast, Google followed by Google, east. Not Apple Maps. What are the Google Maps style directions? What are the Google Maps, all right. <laughs> right, right. Because I was afraid that if you say step by step, it's going to be like, take one step toward the doorway of the, the library. Take another step toward the li doorway of the library. <laughs> that take would another be, step toward that the doorway the, of the library. That would be the genie answer. <laughs> said step by step. <laughs> Hey, it, that would eventually get us there. It'd be annoying, but it'd get us there. <laughs> we have to remember that shit, though. <laughs> or figure out like how to boil it down into Google Maps style. <laughs> Which is a lot of counting. Okay, somebody count the number of times it take. It says take a step toward, and then we'll add it all up. <laughs> right. All right. So yeah, that's Google Maps style directions to. You know, at, sorry to sorry to do a small change here, but that's how you do land navigation. You like you. Everybody has a step count that is like a hundred meters. And you're like, I need to go 200 meters this way, so that means I need to take 218 steps in this direction. And you count every step that you take. And you just know from previous measurement how many yep. steps your 100 meters is. Yep. Reminds me of a song from Aristotle. Step by step, day by day. They start over. <laughs> the away. The deeper we fall, the stronger we stay. We make it better the second time around. My lord. <laughs> there are so many of these. 
let's ask the question and see what the see what the fight is before we decide. All right, so you guys, you guys like spin around, you know, you go to the, and you guys show back up here with the necromancer or the the guy who looks like a necromancer, two skeletons, and a bunch of turtles. Nice. Okay. Guys, the Underfoot Clan is about to fight the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> wow, epic! If there was, if there wasn't just, if there was only five of them instead of six, that'd have been awesome. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Well, if we're asking where the that question about how to get to the door, I'm up for that. All right. Everybody in? Yeah, I'm okay with answering with hold fighting on. for that. So hold on, I need to just do something. Uh, I'm, I'm, yes, no, no, damn it, no. there were turtles. No, they, they will be the same amount of turtles. I just wait one more. Copy paste. Uh, I thought, thought you're gonna change it to five. Nope. <laughs> Nobody even called me on five. There's only four Ooh. Ninja Turtles. Wait, that's well, a girl turtle. That's that's like the sorry. We've been on enough changes tonight. I perfectly went with five <laughs> though. That way, I was waiting for somebody to be like, "Wait, five? There's only four Ninja Turtles." I'm like, uh, "But what about Metalhead?" Oh, Metalhead. <laughs> oh, yeah. nice. All right, so you guys fighting these guys or what? I'm in. Durkin says out loud. I had this yep. long-winded joke about like naming the turtles after Russian artists instead of like. Artist, Do you one. know four Russian artists? There is uh, Todoroyev, uh, <laughs> uh, Semenchev, uh, Pyotrovich, and uh, Sosayevsky. Sosayevsky! Tchaikovsky <laughs> 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 for the musics. <laughs> All right. Dostoyevsky was an author. All right. If we're doing what this, they don't know. Put, you in your, put, in, put in your initiatives if you decide you're fighting. Can I roll my initiative and then decide I'm not fighting? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I rolled shit. These initiative guys. Me too. Come on. Sorry, I gotta click Dude, we get Five, crap for initiative. Seven. Eight. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you got a natural one. <laughs> you are blow ass. <laughs> <laughs> you are blow ass. <laughs> nice. All right. So I need to get another beer, and then we will start the battle. So plan okay. how you're going to fight undead. So while well, he's going, Martin, that's my explanation for why I didn't call you on uh, on five turtles. I've had a lot of beer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot, but I've had a fair. I went, to, I went to Pint Night first. This at the beginning of the session. Well, Joe, I'm I'm bringing you beer when I come in. Uh, nice. I'm gonna bring you some uh, watermelon that I told you about and some yeah. Angry Scotsman. Sweet. So, only one of those. I I only got to taste the Angry Scotsman. I didn't actually. I was very upset that I didn't actually get a hand in making that one. I'm like, come on. <laughs> You're going to make a beer that's a Scottish beer and you guys didn't invite me to that one, but you're going to invite me to the one that's watermelon? Come on. The Necro rolled a one. I know. So, yes. To... It's basically <laughs> Elf and then everybody else. <laughs> so, no one else will need turns. <laughs> wow. It's kind of crappy that conjuring things is concentration. Why is that crappy? Because like like old D and D like when you like called something into his existence it was just in existence until the time ran out. Like it's just weird. Yeah. Like I there for a second I thought that I could conjure some elementals and fly and be okay, but I can't. That was do that. definitely one of the ways they nerfed all magic users was they just said stop stacking spells. You can do stuff, but they're gonna make it very specific things you can do together. Man. Who wants an inspiration die, by the way? What? Give it, us. Give it to one of oh, the yeah? people that are going to get hit, because I'm going to either go in darkness or fly far, far away. The well, inspiration die is for damage. Attack, right? Yeah, let's see. Tax or damage. Tax and, you know, damage, really? Or saving throws. No. Basically, any d20 roll you make, you can use it for. D20 right? roll. Yeah, it does, right, yeah, damage, damage is not d20, unless you're... Oh, okay. If you're cool enough but, to have a d20 for damage, that's pretty cool. Yeah, if you're making an attack roll, it's not bad to have. Yeah. 
It's good for saving throws, ability checks, yeah. It's just a D6, but it's a bonus action for me to dole them out and I get like four days, so. Well, yeah. I mean, if we want to meta it, everything got refreshed after the last fight. So mm -hmm. oh, yeah, should, sure. you should dole those motherfuckers out. No doubt. All right. Do we get to discuss strategy before we have the fight? So the strategy, the fight does not happen until you guys agree to it. Okay, so we theoretically have an infinite amount of time to discuss amongst ourselves strategy. I mean, you believe that to be true? Okay. So before we start, guys, the plan is what? Well, I'm not going to cast necromantic spells. Okay, good idea, I guess. Yeah, yeah, probably a good idea. Probably... I shall attack these pirate uh, turtle things. Um, so, Durka, if you're going to do any sort of mind control things, you're probably going to want to try to do the necro with those, right? So my 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 first intent was to make a wall of fire, if I can, to enclose a bunch of them. Fire? Oh my god, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, you're the ice queen, I'm the fire bitch, right? <laughs> it's true. If ice is pretty, fire is not. Right. <laughs> That's how I roll. Uh, so yeah, my first plan is to do that, but yeah, like if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to target the necro guy for mental stuff. Because, yeah. Okay. I presume I presume that we want to focus more on the necro guy anyway, but I don't know what kind of attacks these turtle guys are going to do. So that could change things. Well, do you guys think I should actually just cloak myself in darkness and shoot, or should I just fly up 120 feet and start shooting from there? I would venture to guess that the Necromancer is a magic user and might have something to counter flying. It's a lot harder to counter darkness. Don't you have some sort of darkness that also has, like... That does damage? Hail damage? Yeah, but it doesn't move with me. It's not, uh, like, regular darkness I can cast on something on me and cover it up or whatever, and it moves with me. But Hunger of Hadrar is I, like, pick a spot, and then it emanates 20-foot darkness from there that has, like, tentacles that deal cold damage and stuff inside. Erica will say that if this is an arcane necromancer, as many necromancers could be, that they won't have any sort of light spells. But I don't know. It could be, it could be a divine necromancer as well. The only thing I was thinking about was flight, is that a lot of spells don't have a greater range than 60 right. feet. Like, there's some that are 120 feet, but most of them are not going to affect me flying. Remember, yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, well, but the spell magic is 120 feet, so I guess that one could make a difference. And falling from 120 feet is going to blow goats. Actually, well, yeah, cause, no, because when fly ends, it's still, you still float down. No, that's not true anymore. No, that's that was something that got added to this one. What? Really? Yeah. Like, the other fly was the one that wasn't like that, but fly in this, like, it no, uh, when, it when the spell ends, ends, the target falls as if it's still aloft until it can stop the fall. Yeah, no, that's what happens in this one. When the spell yeah. ends, the target falls as if it is still aloft. It just falls. No, it falls as if it were aloft, is what it says. No, it says it falls if it is still aloft. Like, if you're in the air, you fall as if you are just jumping Not off as the as if. It, it is. Yeah, mm. just fall. It sucks. So, like, if you're using flying, but for some reason you're walking, you don't fall. That's what it's really trying to say. Right. <laughs> right. Like, if you're, if you're under the fly, but you're standing on the ground, you don't fall over. But if you're anywhere in the up in the air, you just fall immediately. Mm. That sucks. So I would go with darkness. All right. Any other any other strats we need to make? I, would I, say you're gonna fall. I, I have one other spell I can cast. <laughs> how how is Eula going to get the advantages? Yeah, it's tough without uh, being able to you know, work with Ramos on the other side. Ah, that is okay. I can help you with these advantages. Is that all the required mm -hmm. show? Is just advantage? Uh, that is one way, yes. Okay. Who would you like me to set up for your sneaky thiefy attack, man? Should I go for the necromancer? Yep. Yeah, let's go for the big boss. 
Okay, sounds good. Let me look and see exactly what I do because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the bard consults his memory. It's very strange. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, so maybe can you just take rolls. Okay, maybe I can't do that. <laughs> I can do it for myself, but not you, because All I'm right. a duelist. So, are we are we starting? Or are you guys gonna discuss more? I think we're ready to start. Are you guys ready to start? I mean, we know yeah. we need to give Joe advantage if we can. Okay. That's the thing, right? Advantage or the new flanking sort of thing. Right. Uh, Dirk, with your, like, animate dead, if, if we kill one of the turtles, can you, like, bring it back on your side? Not today. Yeah. Also, no, we can the turtle. Yeah, okay. What about one of the skeletons? Yes. Yes, the skeleton, but not today. Right. Hold on. Dirk has to check what she prepared for her extra slot today. Where is that? Background. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> things so, I forgot. So, um, I guess, um, just to, I guess, a better description of what you guys see. Um, you you do you see undead turtles they have you know they're just like undead turtles like hanging out of like they still have their shell but like the bones that are hanging out of them are like undead the two skeletons you can see that they have like skeleton faces um, but they kind of both have armor that seems like it was like made for like like a portly person you know like it's almost like a fat man's armor on them um, but it's like not, it's like metal armor on them and the necro uh, looking guy has, um, you know, you can tell he's a he has like a like a like a cape on. He has like leather armor and like a like a staff. Cool. Uh, uh, if it's okay, I might just go ahead and do the thing then. All right, let's do this. All right. Uh, so I might as well uh, make myself invisible before this starts, right? I don't know how the sure. battle works. It lasts for like an hour. No, I'm, I don't know how the battle works. I don't know if that's allowed. Like, if you cast it outside of the arena and we got brought into the arena, does that affect yeah. stay? Okay, fair enough. I mean, you could try, but it might just start the battle. So that's fine. Yeah, then I, I might be down a slot, a, a sure. second level slot, no less. All right, we're ready. All right, Alpha, you're up. All right. Let's see. He's actually pretty far away, isn't he? Let's He's see. pretty far away, yeah. They start us at like Civil War distances. <laughs> 60 feet. Yeah, that is Civil War distance. Dang. <laughs> Attack on. All right. Um, well, all right. Uh, Eula? <laughs> uh, you, you're pretty awesome. Uh, you should enjoy an extra d6 in one of your rolls. Awesome. That's a bonus action. Enjoy, enjoy that. Yes. Um, I think my next move shall be to become invisible. Let's see what else we got over here. Okay, so that's your move. So I am so super invisible. You wait. You're invisible. So super invisible. Super invisible? Okay. Just regular so, invisible though. So you cast invisibility? Yes. Okay. So the face is invisible? <laughs> yeah. Alright. I also cast invisibility. Okay. Wow. Alright guys. And oh, then wow. I... <laughs> Dark is gonna be the only visible Dark. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, might I go really... invisible, Dark. <laughs> yeah, dang it, I can't see my... Hold on. Dang it. Where was I? Like here, here, something like that. Okay, I really dash to get to <laughs> here. Planning, you're planning your fireball there. I don't know what you're talking about, JJ. <laughs> 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 I'm certainly not checking radiuses. <laughs> I need to do that too, actually. All right, Durka. Uh, Dirk is not going to cast Fireball. Dirk is going to cast Wall of Fire. Okay. And she's going to target it right at that same place where 
that purple arrow is emanating right here. And it creates a 20 foot radius. No. Oh shit, it's 20 feet in diameter. Fuck. Hold on. So it's a wall of fire, 20 foot in diameter, or like an area of fire? It is a wall of fire. Uh, and I'm creating the diameter version to create a like circle. But it's only 20 feet in diameter. So uh, that means 10 feet in either direction. Shit. Wait, 10 feet in either direction. So it's 20 foot in diameter, yeah. Whatever. So it's like four squares wide and four squares tall. Well, that's, that's like four and four. That's like, okay, hold on. Right? No, well, not quite, right? Yeah, that's right. Four, four wide and four tall, is that right? That'd be 20, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Wait, so one, two, three, that's three wide. Can't hardly see. Yeah, it's hard to tell. There you go. That's four by four right there. That's four by four. Wherever the okay. white square is in, where do you want to put it? Uh, I guess I want to, since it's only that big, I guess I want to put it, can I fit it around two, like the skeleton and the necro? There. That'll get a skeleton. Oh, that won't get the skeleton. That'll get the skeleton and the necro. Will they both be inside of it, not in it? They are in the fire right now. I want to put him. I want to put the necro inside the fire for sure, okay. and the skelly can be inside the wall. That's fine. Wait, so you want the <laughs> necro in the fire and the skeleton inside the wall? Sorry, I want the necro inside the wall, or, or like within the wall. No, not within the wall. <laughs> in the non-fire interior. <laughs> you want them in the circle. controlled by? Let's see. There you go. That's where I want it. Right there. That right that's, there. Okay. Yeah. Is that other skeleton in the fire? Not really, right? He, He's not. The other skeleton is not. The white box is the actual fire. Okay. All right. So, hold on. Derek is gonna, I got to push the button so I get cool. Yeah, wall of fire ready. Uh, cast it. All right. Derek is like, yeah, burn, baby. Uh, <laughs> a wall of fire springs up. It's about a foot thick. It is 20 feet tall. And Nice. And it is enclosing the necro, and uh, the skeleton that's in the wall. Uh, makes a dex save throw. DC sixteen. Okay. Wait, is that my save throw? Sixteen? Yeah, sixteen. That's a noob save throw, Corey. What? Oh shit, hold on. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> you did what? Whoa, Come who on. moved that? What? I can't control it, so you. Okay. Nice. So yeah, so the the guy that's in skeleton is in it gets a DC 16 saving throw. Okay. Fails. Ah, nice. So he takes the full 3d8, or 5d8, sorry. So he takes 12 damage. Hmm. That's rough. That's a lot of ones. Uh, and that's all we need to know for for now. Okay, Lorcan. Casting darkness. Okay. And uh... okay, so it's there. Go. This necro or skeleton is going to step out of there. All right. It's the. Oh wait. I guess Darko would have moved too, but that's fine. It doesn't change anything. I just wanted to be away from you guys. Or at least Durka, since she's the only one I can see. <laughs> okay. And. You guys notice the, the heat of my wall. You should be aware. You guys notice that. Um, actually, um, you guys wouldn't notice that yet. Did one of those things go through the wall? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. 
A skeleton moved out of the wall. Skeleton moved out of the wall. That's okay. It was already in it, so it's all good. And the skeleton move here and here. And it is Alpha Rins go. Alright. So if the if the necro doesn't move out of that circle, he takes five D eight damage. Okay. Nice. So assuming he, assuming we didn't not see him disappear, which I don't know, but assuming he's still there, he takes twenty five damage. If he's inside the ring? Yes. Well he's within the ring. Or he's right. touching the ring, or if he's inside. No, if you, and if you, so the ring, the way I have it set up, wow, South Korea is calling me right now. I don't think I'm going to answer that. Um, <laughs> You're safe. It's not North Korea. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, so the wall is projecting heat to right. the inside of itself. There's a direction that it points. And okay. so if you, you're, that, that's why I said he should be wary. He feels the heat like oh, it, okay. on the inside. So if that changes. Right. Stuff because you didn't know. Yeah, that, that would have that would have changed his mind. Yeah. All right, so he would have so... ran through it. He still takes the five d eight if he runs through it. Yep. Okay. All right. So he takes twenty five damage. Sweet. Okay. So... I know what I'm doing next turn. Knocking him back into it. There you go. Lorcan. <laughs> Lorcan, enjoy a d six on your next d twenty roll that you choose. Sweet. Yes. I shall now attempt to stab this turtle. It offends okay. me. As you get right here, thanks for being big. This <sighs> turtle Oh They're landmines Explodes. Splodo turtle! Alright. Make a Rough. make a dex save. This turtle? This turtle? Yes. Yeah, that turtle. Yeah. As it like explode, it like explodes. Oh, now Billy, if you'd played a small folk, you could have played a halfling. <laughs> and you could have that. Halflings is is okay. I internally I will think that halflings is bulls, but oh, that is actually bulls. Ow. Okay. Well, you sometimes well. you get uh, fucked in the butt. All right, I will. Uh... <laughs> so you had to save for half, and he rolled really well. Yes. But, so... Um. Everybody that is intelligent pretty much knows that they are walking landmines. Nice. Now, Billy, don't you wish that that fucking goblin had actually cast cure wounds into my my wand? I could be doing good stuff for you right now. Ugh. And, uh, you talk right now. I'm in very great pain. I don't. <laughs> I do not listen very good. Um. Uh, I'm going to. Okay. So I'm going to use an action surge. Okay. Uh, to back the fuck up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how fast those turtles are. So you and saw, you saw them move, and they did not move very fast. Yeah. They were like 20 feet, maybe. Yeah, I'm not a tank, though. Okay, so uh, if it's cool, I'm going to cast a heal spell on myself. Cool. And yep. that'll give me something back. Cool. Cool. All right, Eula. Oh, uh, I just sorry. realized since I took an action surge, I get another bonus, I think. Uh, so, Durka, go ahead and get your D6, too. Woo! All right. Everybody's D6 up. Okay, sorry, go ahead. All right. Uh, quick question. Was that explosion... It looked like Elf was fairly far away from that. Was that, like... Would that have hurt anyone within a radius, including possibly the skeleton? Um. So from all appearances, it was it was an explosion. Um. It it did not seem to to hurt the other ones as much, or at all as it hurt um, Alpha Rin. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just gonna go balls to the wall anyway. I mean, out of out of game is a certain type. I guess I, it's a certain type of damage um, that they have um, immunities to. Sure. All right. So I'm going to road dash to get there at 50 feet. Ooh, nice. 
Okay. I'm invisible currently. So when you get to here. Okay. This one explodes and this one explodes. Oh wow. Nice. So it apparently doesn't need to see you. It does not need to see you. Wow. Alright, so make a make a two deck saves. You can All do right. this, Eula. You can do this, you're a rogue. Do you have the D6 that did Billy give you a D6 first? Yes. Enjoy the D6. After the fact of on making a roll, right? Yes, as long yep. as you don't know whether you failed or succeeded. Okay. So as long as JJ doesn't say anything. First roll. It's not awesome. Use it. Uh, I'll use the D6. Okay, so that's a 17. Okay, that succeeds. So you take half of this, and I think you... Evasion, have... which means none. None. Okay, so make your second... 18. Yeah. 18, yes. okay, so you make it, so you take... Whoa. None. <laughs> None. Yeah, that, damage, yes. that one explodes and that one explodes. Two turtles gone. Wow. So yeah, Joe, you, you just need to run, run through those. Roll through. Some turtles explode. Nothing happens. Nobody sees what happened except for you were a badass. Yeah. <laughs> and now I stab that guy with advantage because he can't see me. Okay. Unless he can see me. Um, but you would lose advantage. You would lose your invisibility, right? True. Sure. As soon as he stabs. As soon as you stab. But yeah, you will get advantage on your stabby stab. I guess technically since I didn't attack, then uh, nobody got to see me. My face get blown off. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. That, actually, that's true. We that That's perfect because we didn't technically know that's what happened. We uh, might have heard yeah. you run up a little bit, but and we heard you go, shit, shit. Right, Fortunately, <laughs> a 14 will not Wait, hit him. 17 because I have advantage. Oh, 17. Yes, that will hit. Yes. 16 damage. 16 damage. Okay. The best and worst in the reverse order that you wanted. Yeah. Okay. And that is your go. I'm gonna remove mm -hmm. your invisibility. Oh no, it was, it was All right, Durka. So Durka casts magic missile, trying to target the two um, turtles. To see if that blows them up. So one, tur the first dart will go to the first to to this turtle. Second dart will go to Necro, and third dart will go to this turtle. Okay. Uh, pew, pew, pew. Okay. Um, they take damage, but they do not explode. Huh. Okay. So the first one takes two, the necro takes four, and then the other turtle takes four. Okay. Okay. Alright. Lorcan. Okay. I'm gonna go. There. And then I'm gonna shoot Necro. Okay. That will hit. So he should get knocked back as well, which should lock him into the fire. Yep. So 10 feet into there. Nice combo. Nice. He could get knocked back even ah! further. If the, um, um, you didn't say whether the second hit would the second one hit yet or not, right? Uh, Don't tell me it did or didn't. Did you say? I did not say, and I do not see the second roll. Yeah, it's it's on there. It's the, okay. Um, but, so the target needs any. Uh, Don't say. Don't say. That's the first. I, I, I'm not gonna say. When I attack, it's two bolts. So the first one was a twenty-one to hit, and the second one was a fifteen. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to use my inspiration. Use okay. The, use so it. you are so the first one so here's what happens. The first one hits, he is knocked back thrown through the fire wall that is twenty feet high and you can no longer see him. Right. Well but they, they both attack simultaneous. Like I cast Eldritch Blast once and two and I make two oh, attacks. Right. Okay, but yeah. they... okay. So so what are you, what are you asking? The second attack, I, all I'm asking is, since you, I guess it really doesn't matter. You said you didn't see the second attack. I wanted to know whether or not you told me the second attack hit or not so I could decide whether to use the inspiration die or not. I but don't told, tell him. I have not told you yet. 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to choose to use the inspiration die on the second one because it's a 15 and I want to make sure it hits. Okay. And it was a D6, Billy. Yep. All right, so then that one should hit, or it's a 19, so. Yes. All right, so then he should get knocked back another 10 feet. Oh shit! Does that put him in the wall again? Yeah. Okay. Yep. The hope was that it was going to knock him into it and then out of it again. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> so that he could take the damage twice. Oh, man, Lorcan. Ultimate combo we just discovered. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That was the best wall of fire ever. <laughs> time ever casting it in yeah, the moment he stepped out of that fire, I was like, oh, God, I hope I hit him. <laughs> And then when Billy was like, you get a D6, I'm like, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> well, you guys can't see him. He's on the other side. <laughs> True. All right. Uh, so it is. There we go. Um, so. All right. Wall of Fire has done. Done 95 damage. Nice. <laughs> hey, I added 22 to that. <laughs> Alright, and. My 14 was almost max. It was max on one of the this die. This guy rolls. is gonna go cha. This guy is gonna go cha. This guy uh -oh. is gonna go cha. Yeah. This guy goes cha, and this guy goes cha. <clears throat> oh, I think they're coming for you. <laughs> yes, visibilities for the birds. All right, Alpha Ren. Okay, well, Girl, run, bitch, run, run, bitch. Well, uh, let's take a look at a couple things here. Uh. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's that thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I realized once I step back and cast heal on myself, invisibility would have gone away, so I am visible right now, Why? JJ, if that affects anything. Uh, when you cast a spell or attack, you lose invisibility. Uh, only if you cast a spell that's concentration. Oh, well, I oh, just cast heal. Wait. Oh, wait. No, invisibility might be different. You're right. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, so I, I'm visible if that affects the movement patterns of your Skelectitans. Um, your... So this guy would have moved. Yep. So you would have. Yep. yep. That would have happened. That would have happened, and this guy explodes. Oh, make son it, of a butt. Make a deck save. All right. Let me make this the deck shot. save as long as you don't want natural ones. Come on, come on, please. Do it, Al. Don't... Right, yeah. so you, you make the deck save, and you take half of... 30 million damage. Six. Fuck a oh, shit. All right. What is that, 17? Yep. Okay, so 17. I gotta do some math. Where are my maths? Here we go. Billy's second character dies on the second session. So 17, yeah, 17 damage. You don't have evasion, do you, as a bard? Nope, not yet. No, I'm good. I'm real good. It's fine. I'm a fairly tough bard. I'd be dead. All right, but it's your go again. So well. It's oh my now. gosh, this guy's gonna get his face eaten. <laughs> All right, I would like to push this guild in. Nash eats. What's that? All oh, right, right. Uh, <laughs> in memory of Nash, I would like to stab this guy in the face with my sword. Okay. Uh, as often and as. Coolly as possible. Give me a second here to load up my character sheet. Yeah. Then we get the weapons. And then the sha la la la. Did that work? No. No. Okay, I'm just gonna roll that out. Uh, let's see. Shit. Six. 
So 26 hit him, potentially critical. 26 will definitely hit him. And then you get double your dice, but not strength bonus, right? Wait, wait. Correct. 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 You roll yes. the yeah, you roll the damage twice and add your strength once. Okay, he'll take 15. Okay. And then on a second attack, does a 20 hit? 20 will hit him. He'll take six damage. Okay. Make a make a perception check. Okay. He has resistance to swords. Oh. Son of a six. Son of a wait. Did you roll? Working on it, sir. <laughs> Have not yet. He hasn't rolled yet. <laughs> nope. Okay. Might as well. Does Durka see that? Um you can you can roll a perception check at disadvantage. And so can Lorcan. We're doing no, what? Perception? Five. <laughs> Five. Yeah, perception at disadvantage. Did I need to roll perception on my attack or not? Um, did you attack a skeleton? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. No, All right, Lorcan. You see, you like see, um, Alf like attack a guy like real nice, and then like his like uh, you see like a like a like a like like a snake like fall out of his armor. Snake. Okay. Huh. So there's like a little tiny snake, like you know, like on the ground, like that fell out of his armor. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use one of my battle master attack things. Uh, I'm gonna use fainting attack, and it gives me advantage on my next attack roll against that target. Okay. I'll be using it against the skeleton, and I'll get an extra D8 of damage when I make that attack. Okay. If I hit. Okay. Cool. That's my setup. Cool. Eula. All right, so I cannot see the necromancer, correct? Correct. Rough. Oh, I'm just waiting for him to like jump through the fire at you. Yeah, I'm not going to be there when that happens. I am going to run down here, which probably provokes yep. a turtle. Provokes a turtle. Provoke the turtle. Seventeen. <laughs> All right, so you you make it, so Six. you do not take any damage. And I will stab with the claw dagger at the skeleton. Okay. Twenty-one. Twenty-one will hit. Five damage. Five damage. Make a perception check. Okay. Uh, yeah, like you see that you're able to like you know chip off some bones and you're attacking and you know some stuff goes flying. So you like you know you feel you're actually able to like do damage and stuff to him. Okay. All right, Durka. Unless you know, Lord, unless you had something else. Uh, no, no, that's it. Hmm. So. I think what Durka is going... Oh no, that car is concentration. I think what Dirk is going to do... Is... She's going to... Oh, fuck me. I think she's going to... I think she's gonna stop concentrating on the wall of fire. Okay. So let that go away and see what she sees. All right. So let me get that. All right. Do I see the necro? Fuck me. All right. That. Makes it uberly clear what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Durka casts fireball on the necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's the range on that? 150 feet. All right. Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> I like. 
Jerka makes her finger gun. Pew pew! <laughs> 6, 16 deck save. Well, why can I not... Oh, I'm on the... Okay. Go. That was some good damage. Alright, so 16, so his is... So he fails, he takes 35. Okay. Alright, so all you see... All the rest of the dudes, too. You see, like, all these, like, turtles, like, explode? Yes. <laughs> nice. I assume and that doesn't really hurt him, but still it awesome. Does, it doesn't hurt him. And whenever you, the turtles, like, explode, like, after they explode, you see, like, turtles, like, crawl out from under the ground around him. Mm. Oh. Interesting. So we gotta kill him. He's spawning him somehow. Oh, he took 35 damage. Yeah. That's all Durka does. Okay. Lorcan? Okay, I'm going to be casting Ice Storm. It's a 20 foot radius of bludgeoning and cold damage. Um, centered on the Necro. Let's see. Just, to, just in case it matters, Durka also takes a few steps behind this wall. Ice storm, you say? How big is yeah. it? 20 foot radius, centered on the necro. 20 foot radius? Okay. Yep. Hold on. So that big, is... Big storm. Nice storm. I like that. <laughs> so that is 20 foot radius right there. Yes! Centered on the necro. And so everything in that uh, radius gets to make a deck save of 16 or take 14 bludgeoning and 11 cold. Okay. Successful save will have it. I like this combo. It's like firewall, Fire, firewall, ice, ice storm. It's like <laughs> elemental. This damage. song. Elemental. Billy, yeah, so, Billy so yeah, sing Billy, us a song of ice and fire. I was going to say, Billy needs to sing a song, a song of fire. Right, so he, he fails. How, right. much, how much damage is it? Uh, if he fails it, it's 14 bludgeoning and 11 cold. Okay. If he succeeds, it's half. All right. And. So the turtles all fail and they explode and then they like come back. Nice. Oh. And expand out further. And they keep exploding and they keep exploding until they all randomly happen to appear outside of. Well, mine's just an instantaneous effect. Okay, so they go, they explode, the goes away. Uh, it doesn't yeah. So what well, what happens is that that like. Hail comes down and like deals like bludgeoning damage and cold. Hailstones, hailstones turn the storm's area of effect into difficult terrain until the end of the next turn, but that's the only thing that lingers. So it's that initial damage, and then that area is okay. difficult terrain until the end of my next turn. Okay, cool. I got that. All right, so they go and what, Corey? Is that half speed difficult terrain? Yeah. yeah. So these guys move ever so slightly. Okay. Um, the skeleton is going to attack you. Uh... You, I was going to try to shoot the turtle that was nearest to you because when it moves, it's going to move into the range and explode. But I thought it was kind of more important to try to take out like six guys if I could. Sure, sure. I've had pretty good luck with the turtle so far. All right, does it? 24 hit you, Eula. Yes. Shit, I was going to say, but it's disadvantage, uh, but it's still a 24. <laughs> yeah, that hits me. Wait, why is it disadvantage? Cloak of displacement. Oh, right, right, yeah. Shit. Alright, 20 damage. Ooh. I am going to use a reaction and take half damage. Okay, and <laughs> then his second attack. Can you use, can you use evasion? Is evasion a reaction, Joe? It, I think, is. Does a 10 hit you? So you may want to decide whether you, mean, you want to decide whether you're using your reaction to half this damage or to, ha to take zero on the turtle. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and use it now. Okay. Burden the hand and all that. Right, right. Okay. All right. So Alpha, Alpha, does mm -hmm. a 13 hit you? Nope. Oh, in fact. Uh, what's real cool is because it doesn't. Repost. I get to make a reaction attack. Repost. 
Okay. And uh, it gets made with advantage, and I do an extra D of damage when I hit. So, um... Uh, repost is 25 simple. hits anyway, but let's see if it's... Let's see if it's a crit. Nope, but... Alright, I'll roll that extra damage. Alright. Are you shitting? Right, nah. So, he goes... So he, he, like, he, like, collapses and falls down, and... You notice that he disintegrates into snakes. He disintegrates into snakes. Damn it! This blows a big butt. And I'm tired of being right. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you saw the snake fall out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and the snakes are going to attack you. Ah, bulls! So, Corey, FYI, evasion does not require a reaction. It is a twenty-two nice. hit you. Ah. Of course, the freaking snake eats me. Can you still right. only do it once per turn? Nope, that one has no, no restriction. Nope. Billy, that ripo is cool. Is that like a combat maneuver or something? Yes. Make a make a um, con save. Of course. Would have been better to have been hit by the freaking skeleton. <laughs> oh. Con save, con save, fuck a con save. Let's see what yeah. we got here. When it comes oh, to sure. the saves, I just, I'm yeah. the one who should be making them. <laughs> Course and poison. Oh, what does it do? Make you stupid and look funny? It gives you a disadvantage <laughs> on attacks. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. And does it give you a snaggle tooth? <laughs> and half your face is yeah. sagging. Oh, uh, this <laughs> is half your face. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, damn it. So you got is... face and disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and more pissed about snaggle tooth. <laughs> Alright, so poison officially is has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Okay. Alright, and this turtle is going to move here and explode. Yeah, Billy, that Ripos thing reminds me of like three point five Star Wars feet. Do you remember that Agile Agile Ripos thing? Yep. So yep. That was the most broken fucking feat, man. So he, <laughs> he that feet, every time you got missed, you got to take an attack. And Wait, did he teleport back? No, he, he reappeared over there. Like, he exploded, and then another one, like, crawled from out of the ground. Wow. Dirk needs to learn that spell. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could take more than one reaction per turn. I have a lot of reaction-based stuff. All right. Mm. Alpha. Here we go. That was a, back to me? Yeah. I'm going to back the fuck up, and, uh... Are you disengaging? Yeah. Okay. Is that a full round thing? Well, it, it, it takes your action, action to do it. Action, yeah. Okay, you, so you, you make that provoking. Does you that mean your, you still get like a bonus or? You still get your bonus or reaction or move. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I might as well let the snake bite me again. I'm gonna try to move away from the snake. Okay. All right. I think that's a legal move. Let me check and see how far I went there. Does a yes, 14 30. hit you? Nope. Okay. Uh, that snake's gonna get hit with a sword. No, he's not. I'm not wasting it with this disadvantage bullshit. Uh, I'm gonna cast uh, Lesser Resto on myself okay. to remove that poison, yep. and that'll be my turn. Okay. Nice. So you're not poisoned. Mm-hmm. You. Uh... All right. Interesting. Um. Oh, also. Whenever what? you guys killed the skeleton, the skeleton crawled out of the ground up here. All right. All so right. Target the necro. Strategy clear. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking necro. Okay, so if I disengage. Well, uh, uh, to be fair, guys, where the necro is, like we could have killed him when we knocked him through the fire, and he might have just come through a point of origin where he is standing right now. Like there might be like a spawn pit or something there. Because he's he's standing where I knocked him through the fire potentially, and that's where everything else seems to be coming from as well. So it may not be him that is spawning them, but more of a certain point. Fair enough, but I wouldn't know how to deal with that anyway. So I'm gonna I try killing the necro first. I gotta piss you wreck. <laughs> Roll, you're attacking the skeleton. Uh, does do do the turtles inhibit my attacks toward the necro if I were to fire like ray of frost at him? No, no. Sweet. Then I'm going to attack the Necro. I'm going to uh, okay. disengage, move to there. All right, so you move right there, and this turtle explodes. <laughs> that turtle explodes. 
That's cool. So, make a deck save. 22. 22. Alright, you're good. <laughs> so you're a landmine finder. <laughs> but he just keeps Don't... respawning back in the beginning. Yeah, it's only going to work so long, guys. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and make your... T well, go ahead and roll your stuff while I piss. Okay. This is cray cray. Oh, man. You need some fireballs. And we've already done like a metric shit ton of damage to him, so that's what I'm good. saying. I think we killed him, and he respawned I, back. I don't think so. We've only done slightly more than a hundred. That's a. Did you say you did, Martin? Hi. How much damage did you do? I did twenty-two initially to him with the Eldritch Blast, and then with the uh, Ice Storm, I did another twenty-three, twenty-five. And I did sixteen. So we're up to we're up to like just over 150 now. Hmm. I think. But I I can't tell if everything is spawning around him or spawning from that point cuz that's exactly where he got knocked. So it's very possible there's something there either invisible or that we haven't seen yet. Right. I want to know what spell he cast. <laughs> yeah, for real. The tent right, probably misses. The tin will not hit. Okay. Then you done with your move and everything? Yep. Durka? That's what Durka's going to do. Firewall. First, first we're going to try and click her own character. There it goes. Comes out right there, and she casts Fireball. Fireball, Fireball, Fireball! Oh, less damage this time, but right on the Necromancer. On the Necromancer? Yep. Keep clicking. Hey, Jay, uh, before you tell me the result of your roll, like whether or not it succeeds or fails, okay. let me check something. if that's cool. This be the last use of this. Okay. Oh, actually, that's actually a really good reminder, Billy. Um, before I cast Fireball, I cast Hex on him. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to pick Dex as his ability, right? Right. I'm going to pick Dex as his ability. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. So he's at disadvantage. There's no save, so he's just at disadvantage on his, um, on his yep. attacks. Okay. okay. Or on his save, My, dex, dex ability checks. Mine does not apply his way too And he far takes away. additional damage from you, Corey. Only if I, only if I hit him with an attack. I don't know what uh, that means. Yeah. I imagine area probably wouldn't affect that. Yeah. And I don't yeah, have the wasn't concentration based, man. I'd be using that shit all the time. Yeah. Okay. And I did before I got so dark. Corey, roll. Oh, wait, so you. Wait, so is that fireball. Alright, so then he. So you. Have you used your. Um... Wait, so he's. See, so he succeeds his deck save. What happens on a success? Half damage? Yeah. Alright, so. He takes pew pew! <laughs> okay. Lorcon. What here. about the rest of them? Do they all blow up again? Yeah, they all blow up and come back. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. Except um, for the skeleton. He doesn't he blow up. He did not blow up, but he took damage. Right, right. Okie day. So move to there. And. Shoot Necro. Okay. That'll hit. 26 and 24 to hit. So two hits. Total of 20 damage and 20 feet knockback. Okay. My goal now is I'm going to try to knock him off the edge and see what happens. Okay. So his go. He casts some stuff. And you guys don't see him. Oh. He disappeared. He disappeared. Okay. Okay. And let's see. Uh, 
the skeleton is going to go here. Attack Eula. Okay, with Nine. disadvantage. Yeah. It's not hit. So he attacks. Disadvantage 11 does not hit. Oop. Um, the skeleton is going to move and then dash and then end up here. Okay. But so not attack. Alright, Alpha. The dash. Um, snake round two. Uh, I'm gonna chop that snake with my sword parts. Okay. <laughs> and Do you would fight with a rapier or like a. Yeah, it's a rapier. So it's a have at the kind of weapon. Alright, right, so right. You're, you're at disadvantage for being poisoned? I'm actually not. I oh, right, 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 right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so that will definitely hit. These things happen. And 13 damage. Okay. Okay, I shall slash that bitch again. Snake's got some hit points. Yeah, he does. Swing one hit. That ain't no normal hit. It's a swarm. Ten oh. damage. Ten damage. Okay, it is still there. But All right, you snake. Cut, you cut the heads off of several of the snakes. All right, I'm gonna cut more. You look like a badass while you're doing it too, because you're using a Actually, racer to cut oh, heads oh, off. I'm sorry, Joe. Yo. I totally forgot to do this. Um, all of these things would have <laughs> all of the turtles would have moved to you. Oh, <laughs> oh god. Shit. So make six deck saves. Oh god, Joe. Uh, all right. well, at least we're about to at least we're about to find out whether or not they're spawning from a specific point or from the necro. Alright. Here we go. <laughs> One. Oh, rough start. Alright, so hold on. We'll do this. Alright, so. Oh my god, Joe. This might be the end of Eula. <laughs> right, yeah, so this take... could really kill you. So take half. Alright, that's one. You take half even on a failed save? Is that what Correct. it is? Yeah, I basically have the equivalent of improved evasion. Right. Wow. Uh, nice. Nice. Okay, that's rough. I totally forgot to do that. God! God. No, Joe. You a no. <laughs> Well, the good news is that we will find out, if we win this fight, we'll find out the answer if some of us win and some of us don't, whether yep. or not... Well, we, we are told that death is death. We were told, yeah, if you die, you die. You a no. <laughs> Come on, what are you rolling? <laughs> Rolling. Yeah, that was a seven, so a natural seven. A, right you rolled there. a three. A five. Oh, a three, a three, man. and a five. Half okay, you gotta stop rolling balls. All right, okay, so that's right. Was... Yula's down. Oh shit. <laughs> so you take, so you take damage from three more sources. Do they still explode if they're moving like one after another instead of all simultaneously? Oh, that's like... true. <laughs> yes, they uh, they so the the rule is that there's a living creature within a certain radius. They explode. Yeah, sure. Durka, you just what? died, or you you just died. It's true, Durka, you right, still right. are. You might still be alive. No, you was dead. Yeah, because the next if they, three. Blocks, if they still they... move toward me even after I'm down. Then I am dead. Yep. Because each one will cause an automatic fail on a death save. No, oh right. no. Like if you take damage while you're down, that's an that's an automatic fail. Yep. No! <laughs> yep. Wow, Eula. That's one uh, way to go. <laughs> but they spawn from a new point, guys. Look. Is that where they spawn? Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> so, Alrighty. So, okay. You, man, uh, we need hero points or something. Like, at this point, <laughs> like... The game isn't fun if there's no death. No, no, <laughs> I just... I'm just saying that at this point, Lorcom would be like, I want to call upon all of this warlock power that I've absorbed, and I want to fucking kill So, him. So, for the record... We have that once per level thing. You can do it, Martin. What is a once per level thing? What? The... Do you remember the Glorious Hydukin one? Yeah, oh, I, th I thought you shot it down. I, yeah. I don't remember. It was like once per level. I don't level. think we've ever used that. No, I, I used it once. 
really early on, and, and Jonathan used it once. Jonathan used it Jonathan once. Used it to save somebody from dying from the sphere. I used it during the goblin combat, and nobody else has used it ever since then. Huh. I didn't know we could do that. Yeah, so, I thought there was a conversation after that or something that so was basically... For, for the record, Joe, uh -huh. any time that you were going, that Eula was going to die that happened in the universe... Oh, yeah, there's that. Any that happened in the universe, it would... Piss face was going to save you. Right, because I don't know if you guys even know this. One of the predictions the, the that pissed Eula off when he paid that, or when she paid that lady, she said that uh, don't kill his face; he will save your life. So, <laughs> that unfortunately, she's wrong. She is. She is, she wrong, is wrong at this point because you can't get in. There is no. There's no way in this in this specific battle that anybody, unless you are literally a god, can do anything to help anybody. <laughs> like you, you can't teleport to anywhere. Like, a, a, like a wish couldn't get you out of here. A wish couldn't get you into here. I, I would argue though, as the GM, that <laughs> like, it, it, that unless she is, is unless she is ever wrong in her perspective. Oh, she's wrong. Then you would say, need to find she, a way. She's, like she's not a god. Like she just like say, looks unless at she the... unless she unless she actually is wrong in her prediction sometimes. Then no, you can like, still have her prediction come true by him like magically appearing, but like I've been invisible and tagging along with you fuckers this whole time. You know, like a god could come along and like change fate, and then her predictions would be wrong. But so, so I mean, but that, that's that's then what it would take. Like if from from a consistency standpoint, if that's what it takes for her to be wrong, then that's what has to be happening. From a glorious Hadouken standpoint, though, I can cast heal spells. I can give you like one more shot. If you can, if you use your once per level glorious Hadouken to cast a heal spell on Durka, Eula or Nula right now. Cast on Durka too. She'll laugh. <laughs> like that would, if you cat how depending on how much, how much heal you can do. It might or might not save her. If I'd give I, a shot, man. If I'd I, had a bag of holding on me, I would say that, you know, you could you could say that his face has actually been hiding in the bag of holding and, like, sneaking out for air periodically and just, like, happens to finally get tired of being in there and jump <laughs> out right at the moment to, like, you know, something like that. Like, so, again, for the prediction to be correct. Yeah, no, this is... So, I... I, I so one thing that I absolutely hate is like I like to make things difficult, but I very much as a GM dislike killing people's characters. Like no, it's a part of the things. game, man. It's got to happen. But like this is one of the scenarios that like you you are like separated and it's like life or death, and this is very much like it's. Ah, damn it. I'm not trying to come up with a way to <laughs> to, to save Eula. I don't even think that's in Lorcan's character, but Lorcan's character is all about vengeance. So I would be more of using my glorious Hadouken to be like, I want to kill the fuckers that took out my friend. Oh, man. Um. All right, roll, roll, roll your glory if you want. Alpha, you can roll a, you can roll your once per level glorious Hadouken to attempt to heal Eula. Like mid explosion. <laughs> All right, do I roll a d20? Uh, just roll, roll your normal heal check or your normal heal spell or whatever you're casting. Okay, I'm. Boosting. It normally wouldn't require anything, but but the damage healed, right? Yeah, I just didn't know that if you had to roll a d20 for like the majesty level of the high duke or something. I thought I remember that. Oh yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. That's the way. That's the way it was in old campaign. I don't know okay. how it works in JJ's. Yeah, new yeah. Roll, so just... roll, roll a roll a d20 for the. For the majesty of it. Okay. <laughs> Very average. <laughs> Very average now roll majesty. Your, now roll your heal spell. All right. <laughs> Four and eleven. Okay. <laughs> That's probably not gonna do it. You was dead. Oh man. That's rough. Considering that over one of those explosions for more than eleven damage, yeah. I don't know. That's well, gonna do it. If, if properly timed. Right, I would like have right. died, 
I could have soaked two more explosions, gotten healed, which resets the death counter. Yes, that. Then, okay, so that. Then you're, be, you're right. Yeah, that is what explosions. happens. You are, I don't think, hey, Joe, I think it's if you take damage when you're in death, it's two, damn, two isn't it? Really? I thought it was yeah. only if you got a natural one on your uh, death save. I think it's only one. No, I don't know. So, where, how we're going to do this, Eula, you are right now at. Two, you are at two death saves, and no, you're at two failures and no successes on your <laughs> death saves. Okay. Oh, you're at okay. right. And it is your go. So roll for your life. <laughs> All right. So it's it's my turn again. Uh, so Normally that would on, be the start on, of my on turn. On right? alpha, on on. Uh, wait, 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 wait. On alpha did something during my turn. No, no. So the necro went, right, and they moved and exploded, and then it was Alpha's go. But we kind of like, oh shit, I forgot to move the turtles. Oh, okay, so okay. So now it is your go, Corey. It's only two death throws if you somebody crits you while you're down. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So now you're making a death save. Success. All right. So you are not dead. You are at two failures <laughs> and one success. I know. Whoa. I know what I'm doing on my turn. Shooting Eula. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, got it. Just, right. to, just to make all of that useless. All right, Durka. Uh, so can, so Durka can see this turtle over here, right? <laughs> no, no, Jojo. You can see all the turtles, yes. I got it. Wait, On my there's turn, a wall there, I'm going though, to right? shoot Eula, and then I'm going to glorious I duke into rage out over somebody killing Eula. <laughs> <laughs> So Durka will move. There. Right, you can't see it. What? Never mind. Did you cast darkness, Lorcan? I've been, yeah, I've I've never turned darkness off. Oh wait, shit. You, okay, you sorry. You can't see that. Hold, Hold on. on. I forgot to make sure people could see this. Oh, I'm sorry. I could see it. <laughs> uh, so I can go. Nope, I can't get there. I can go one, two, three. Oh wait, so I can't see that they're over there. You can't see that they're. You cannot see that they're over there. Oh right. Okay. So. Yeah. Durka can't see that they're over there. She also didn't see Eula die. Correct. Um. Then what does she do? Uh, that's a good question. What does she do in this case? She can't see the enemies. She's behind a wall of darkness. She probably... Wait, where were you before, Larkin? Did I see the necromancer go invisible? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. No, I shot him from where I'm currently at. I haven't moved from where I shot him. Okay, so I didn't see him go invisible. So I don't know he's invisible. I don't know he's not where I think he is. Is Joe, Joe are you invisible still? No, no. no. Not by no, all Eula is on the ground. I don't know Eula's on the ground. I'm pretty much just totally ignorant of what's going on in this fight at the moment. Um, I think in that case... Durka will. Jeez, what does she do? She doesn't know what to do. I guess she casts. I guess she casts. Fly on her? No, she... what does she do? Jesus. Uh, she casts Detect Thoughts. There we go. Boom. Done. Okay. Um, the, necromancer, the Necromancer is not within 30 feet of me, right? No. Okay. Good to know. So you detect Lorcan's thoughts. Fair enough. <laughs> or does he? <laughs> Lorcan. <laughs> Alright, Lorcan, your go. You detect MURDER! <laughs> All right, so um, I 
Hey, JJ, just for future reference, how thick are those walls that Necromancer is behind? Um, it honestly, where he's... Well, you can't see him. But it well, looks, right, but I mean, how thick are the walls that I'm right next to? It doesn't look like a wall. It kind of looks like... It, it's like whiteness. You know, it's kind of like almost there's like a little bit of a... It's like a... It's, it's probably like waist high around. Like this. This well, is probably This like, right here is what I think is what he's talking about. This oh, one. that. No, that's just like... That's like probably like like a couple feet up. It's like, you know, three or four feet up. So we can see the turtles clearly. Yes. Uh, Dirk, I can't, but like we you can. could, if well, if you're okay. if I you gotcha. are normal sized, you could step up there without moving anything. But if you're small, it would like take an extra five feet. Ah, okay, gotcha. But it's not, it's not like a it's not like a tall wall. Okay, it's, yeah. Okay, good to know. All right. Uh, oh, so I guess Dirk will move as well. I didn't. I mean, the whole point of wanting to do that is so she can start to get somewhere. So she moves along this wall. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right, Lorcan. Um, I am going to. I don't know if this is going to work or not because I don't know how this dimension works. But I'm going to call out to Olaf to disguise, hide, or invisible petals, if possible. And then I am going to use my last spell to ice storm the area where the turtles are. So if the necromancer's still there, which he should be... <laughs> we are making a lot of assumptions. <laughs> I'm going to hit... I'm just going to cast my 20-foot radius in that area that would cover all the turtles and... Our creature is... They each get to make a deck save of 16 or take 13 bludgeoning and 14 cold. Successful save will have it. Turka, by the way, still doesn't know that Eula's down. Well, I mean, I did call out loud to Olaf, but I didn't say anything about her being down, just to disguise, hide, or right. make her invisible. Yeah, yeah. no, I get you. Alright, so I is it six halves the damage? Success halves the damage. 16 is the save. Yep. She succeeds. And then what was the total damage? Total is 27. 13 of it bludgeoning, 14 of it cold, in case it matters. <sighs> and that spell, I'm not even worried about range. That's a 300 foot spell, so. Yeah. There's nothing in here I can't hit with it. And then after that, I will move. Okay. The Necromancer dies, and everybody that he was controlling blows up. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping if I can get rid of this fucking Necromancer, it might turn the tide. But, well, so... but if, if the Necromancer dying causes the skeletons to blow up, you would die anyway. Yeah, well, at least the rest of us don't. Alright, so... <laughs> Alright. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> but this would happen. The skeletons would still attack you if you're down. They, they would just start. Oh. They would just start chopping you. God damn it. Um. So uh, that would that would be an automatic failure. Yeah, yeah. Orkan moves away just in time for Dirk to be like, "Oh wow, Petals is literally just being chopped up into pieces right now." <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that's. Neat. And I'm, I, I, you had, you literally are the one character that had a get out of death free card. I know. <laughs> not, not here. Like everybody's like stuff does not work here. That's Joe, uh, if it helps, my other character can be a magnificent headstone for you. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she'll be okay with that. And, uh, and, 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 Joe's and, not gonna. Eula's not getting buried. She's going to be walking with us as a zombie. Here, here, oh, here. No, 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 she's not. So, so those guys, so the, the skeletons move, or the turtles move, and... Did they blow up and then come back when I iced them, or...? Yes, they blew up and then came back, and then are okay. now moving. Okay. That is difficult terrain, so they'll move yep. at half. And... 
The skeletons will move. Cha, actually, hold on. I don't know. <laughs> Eula moved with them. They're, uh, they're dragging her corpse along with them. No. And the snake will attack Alpha. Does this 23 hit you? Yep. Alright, four damage, and you're already poisoned, so. Hey, I removed it, so I'll. Uh, that's true. Oh, yes, yeah. make a con save. <laughs> Why did I say anything? Alright, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> you are poisoned. Again, if you were a halfling, Billy. <laughs> <sighs> if I could All just right. stop licking licking nuts. Alright, Eula. Alright, you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Way to rub <laughs> salt in it, Jamie. It's real good. <laughs> salt in the wound. Derka. All Eula does is lay there <laughs> bleeding yeah. more. I, I, I twitch. <laughs> nice. Uh, my, tongue, my tongue lolls out of my head. <laughs> Shit. Durga! Vengeance! Durga doesn't know where it is. Salvation! <laughs> <laughs> JJ, do you know where it is? Yes. I'm moving around on the GM layer. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I realized he just popped out of initiative when you did that, too. Um, don't worry. Do you guys... Oh, yeah. I have him I have him on my initiative. Right, because we can't see him. Yeah. Yeah, when he went to the GM, Larry would disappear off of the turn order for us to see. Right. Balls, balls, balls. Kill the things that killed paddles! Why? It doesn't do any good. Fidget! Durka doesn't get enraged about people dying. I wouldn't get enraged about you dying. <laughs> Just Eula and Tiny. And Tiny has kind of made me upset a little right now, so I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. It was so funny, Joe, because like you like totally took no damage from any turtles, and all of a sudden you... I know <laughs> three in a row. And if just before like that you row. had said, "Guys, this is only has <laughs> this is gonna last so long." <laughs> yep. <laughs> um. How long does invisibility last? Minutes? Minute? Nope. Invisibility. I actually have that pulled up. It is one hour up to concentration. Oh my god, okay. So he could be invisible for fucking ever. Yep. Until he does something. Attack or spell. But if he's really, like, just all he's concerned about is generating new turtles. Right. If we can figure out where he is, I'll fairy... Well, shit, I can't fairy fire his ass. I used all my spells. Um... Well, we can find out where he is. We just have to kill one of the creatures. It's true. So what Durka does is Durka casts... Kill something, and then I will shoot him. Well, <laughs> so Durka isn't very good at killing things, except for en masse. So I'm going to say... I'm going to... I'm going to say... Uh, uh. Well, actually, no, that's not true. Just, say, I... just delay your action. I'll kill the skeletons, and when they spawn, you can yeah, fireball that's where they're what at. I was going to say, but I could potentially kill a turtle. I don't know how much damage they actually take, but eh, don't risk it. All right, I'm going to cast. I'm going to. I'm so going to. You, ready... you would know that this skeleton is is damaged. I'm going to. I'm still going to ready. I'm going to. I'm going to cast fireball. Ready it, and uh, for and trigger when when one of the things respawns next to him. Okay, that's my plan. Okay, Lorcon. All right, JJ. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna glorious Hadouken. Okay. 
And my glorious Hadouken is I'm going to try to call upon the power of the warlocks that I have uh, absorbed. Okay. To try to give me additional power to get my vengeance for Eula. Okay. I don't know what you want me to roll for that. Just, just do your normal thing, and then I will, and then I will add, I will add stuff. Okay. So and then I will Eldritch blast the this skeleton. Okay. All right. So you Eldritch blast the skeleton, and it like knocks him into this skeleton. And like you knock her back really hard, like you're like super angry. You let the hate flow through you, and <laughs> it like they like they, like smack into each other, and like snakes come flying out of both of them, and they both um, like go away, and they come up to shit uh, here and here. Go, go. And here are. Snakes and snakes. All right, so you are fireballing, Corey. I'm, I'm gonna move, by the way. Okay. Woo. All right, so he, so everything like just, so everything like you catch your fireball and then like everything that's undead just like falls to the ground like inanimate. Nice. Including the snakes. So, nice. was he standing right between the two of them? Yeah. Combo. So, just to tell you guys how close you guys were to saving Eula, Lurkon, Lurkon needed to do three more damage. Oh, that's rough. I tried, y'all. I tried. That's rough. Three more damage, and it would have it would have saved. I was kind of hoping that Durka was going to follow up my ice storm with another fireball or something, and then we could... I couldn't see him. Oh, that's right. You were behind my darkness. Yeah. I'm I glad that the Necromancer died. I was out of tricks. <laughs> like, that was it for me. So. Oh, all right, rough. so you guys all... <laughs> go around, and... Durka, by the way, still has no idea that Eula is dead. All right, so you guys, everybody, like, whoa, that's rough. Everybody comes back here, and then you see Eula's standing that's body, and Eula's standing body falls to the ground. Unconscious. Can I make a medicine check to see if she has life signs at all? Yeah, you can go over and um, you, I'm assuming most people probably rush over to her, and you you like do medicine checks, and she does not have a beating heart. And Damn. Huh. Does her body look dead. fucked up like it was in the battle, or is she just like a lifeless, uninjured body? Just a lifeless, uninjured body. And all of our spells are returned and everything? Yep. And you guys feel just fine. Alright, JJ, important question. I guess it's not terribly important, but um, <laughs> I uh, the darkness I cast was from the wand. Does the wand still have full charges? Yep, everything you have is full charges. Nice. Hmm. All right. Um, I guess what? I get you a zombie now. I oh, library shit, comes guys. over and he, and he feels he feels sad, and he he's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for you guys' loss. And then he like, um, go over and like puts his like hand on you guys, and then it's like, and it takes you to, um a like a tap like a huge it's like normally the things are like pillars but it takes you to like a huge stone wall and it is it is a map and it has you know like one of those like you are here things and it is a is a huge map of the island and it has the, the, this island we're on right now this island that we're on right now and then it has a beach and it's like you know it's like door is here sign and it has um, it's on the beach? Yes. Oh. 
<laughs> and it's on like the edge so like you see this and there's like a huge map and then it tells like you know like a there's like a you know a dotted line that like uh, you know like shows you shows you all a path nice that was, Martin, that was better than I could have hoped there's like this whole did a chuck did a chum thing <laughs> happening in my head right now <laughs> very cool <laughs> it looks something like th no <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, is, what was the, uh, my uh, that uh, GIF that I made or the video that I made for our first session, Martin with Fergal? Remember that? Like the, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I miss those, man. I wish we could have had more of those. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, you guys have um, like a very explicit map of the of the island and the route uh, that it would take you to get to the door. Wow. I can't decide whether or not I'm more pissed at Perido for making us go through all of this and losing Eula to find her, or if I'm more pissed at Ramos for not helping us in that fight. Yeah, I mean, that's something you guys will have to figure like, out. We lo I, I, like, I feel like that when I see him next time, I'll be like, Eula's dead. You know why? You abandon us. Yeah, that'll have to be something you take up with, with Ramos. Well, Joe, yeah, I know what his answer will be. His answer will be like, you could have backed out of the fight. You didn't have to do the fight. Oh, you feel Boss of Eula tough? Yeah, I'll make a new character though. <laughs> <laughs> so I honestly think that that's like the... Joe, Baradil, Baradil. <laughs> <laughs> so I honestly think that's like the first time that I've like... like outright killed one of you guys' characters. Really? So like well, I mean, so Parado Parado Yeah yeah Parado went away and Nash you could like there are definitely ways to re, you know bring him right. back. Yeah. Uh, but Parado is about to die. Let's say so, even in your last game you didn't kill anybody. Like Wes's character was the only one that died and that was because we killed him as players. Yeah. So I don't know, I feel weird. <laughs> that's like, that's good, that's like half the thing. You got to put real danger. Real hey, danger. Yeah. Hey, five V is supposed to be about this, man. The fact that none of us have Super died in an underdog campaign so far is kind of amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah, I haven't made it like easy on you guys, but like I, I don't know. I like, I find like I get really attached to my characters. Well, we've got Trixie, man. Like you, yeah. you've made it tough enough on us, but we've been pretty tricksy about our tactics. So, yeah. I yeah, I don't know. I just I always I. I don't know. I always feel bad about killing people's characters. It happens. So. I love Lorcan, but I mean, if she dies, she dies. We could always carry her around. The, and, de the and decisions that she lot. makes, <laughs> Lorcan is likely to die. Lord, I mean, rest, Lord, rest, rest, rest the thing, right? The Drax situation was pretty precarious for Lorcan, but you guys, <laughs> yeah. like had some pretty ingenious stuff. That's what I said, man. Like, we're, we've been tricksy about it, so it's the only reason why we've survived. And that's why I think Lorcan is going to be a little upset at Ramas because, like, if we could have worked together as a team and work and like come up with things like we normally do, maybe Eula would have survived. And also, oh man, that's crazy because, like, literally, Joe, the like any time that you had died, I was going to just like, no matter the ridiculous situation, like hand of God it. Mm -hmm. But this one time, literally, like your old artifacts don't work. Like your oh, that would have sucked if I'd taken a bunch of damage. I'd been like Joe, cold me, and I'd be like oh, I know, hurts. like your artifacts don't work. Like a wish couldn't got you out of there. Like mm -hmm. anything short of a deity coming down and like plucking you out of there was not gonna save you guys. Right, oh, man. Yeah, Dude. Uh, and I was I was trying to brainstorm because the thing is, it, it doesn't work in that direction. It's it's a it's a forecast. So, so yeah. the, you know, the, the forecast, like, I mean, I know you obviously can't, like, predict what we're really going to do. The forecast would have been able to take all that into account. Right. So this is like, well, this is like, this is, the, the trials are separate of time and space and destiny and everything. So it's like, nothing matters. 
and the and the 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 woman can still be right in like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of cases. Right, but 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 the fact this remains, the one case of all wrong in this case. <laughs> she yeah, is this wrong. is the one case out of infinite universes where he doesn't save you. The other right. thing is, we don't know that she's wrong in this case. Did you ever tell any of us of I that did not prediction? Tell anyone. Yeah, so we don't even know that she was wrong in that prediction. And I was so, <laughs> dude, Joe. You do not like so. There was like a few things in this campaign that I'm always like constantly thinking about, and that mm -hmm. was one of them. Right, right. Like, every time like you guys would get close to like death or something crazy would be happening, I'd be like, okay, what is Pissface doing? What is Pissface doing? How is he gonna save you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, great, man. And Joe, you were telling me at the beginning of that fight to cast that that uh, darkness spell I have that does the cold. If I had cast that on myself, I'd been like, ah, fuck, fuck, <laughs> what the hell? Since I was like a new character, I was gonna, I didn't do this, but I was gonna get hold of JJ just in whispers and be like, JJ, I'll whip off a mask and be like, I'm piss face, here to save you. <laughs> right, right. right. Do it. Dude, that would have been awesome, God. Billy. You should have done that. That would have been a good idea. His face is a goblin. He's like visibly smaller than me. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had to have had like stilts on and shit. You could have he's a goblin. Some, uh, a goblin would totally be walking on stilts. <laughs> could have had some sort of magic item that like was permanent, yeah. permanent uh, disguise self or something. <laughs> I was willing to whip it out, but I just felt like it was too far fetched. Oh, right, man, right. that would have been awesome. So, so <laughs> how I how I expected this fight to go, like you guys to figure that out, and like so the 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 turtles had a movement speed of twenty, and it moved to the nearest visible target. So like you right. guys, I just expected one person to like kite them away, and everybody else to like kill the necro guy. Yeah. Well, we didn't figure out that the necro was like straight up the target until later on. I think we were killing the turtles yeah. and just realized they would spawn. But then when the skeletons did as well, it was like, oh shit, he's just making all this stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it wasn't until the second to last round of the fight that we really figured out that the necro was the only thing worth fighting. Yeah. Yeah. But we started out the fight with Durka saying, "Let's or, or Corey said we should focus on the Necro." <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. He just had a lot of meat between us and him, well, but we just I mean, didn't realize. We definitely. I mean, we did. We did over over a hundred damage to him before oh, yeah. we ever figured that out. We were yeah, definitely well, focusing on the network Necro. Yeah. yeah. How many hit points did he have? Over 150, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys did over two. You guys did over two. I was like, I'm pretty sure we're over 150 at this point. Yeah, you guys did over 200 damage to him. Yeah. Holy crap! Well, it wow. helped when in the first round he took like seventy damage. That, from so, wall so fire like three times. So, like I expected you guys. So I expected you guys did not take near as much damage from the turtles as you did, and to have <laughs> figured that out and to like kite them around. So I gave the necro a lot of hit points, but you guys kept taking damage from like the turtles and stuff. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I gotta scoot though. I'll catch you on a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Joe, any ideas about what character you're gonna create? Uh, off the top of my head, the one thing we.